If you're in the market for a high-end pair of truly wireless headphones, you may have heard of the Drop THX Pandas. With a built-in THX AAA amplifier and 55mm ribbon planar magnetic drivers, they're the first headphones to deliver audiophile-grade sound quality over a Bluetooth connection. But given that there are plenty of technical reviews out there of these headphones already, I wanted to take a different approach with this video and simply talk about some of the practical considerations that I would mention to a friend who is looking to buy the Pandas. Because while I really like them, they're hard to recommend to just anyone. I've been using the Drop THX Pandas for the past four months or so, and have had a pretty good experience with them. In fact, I choose to use them over the Sony WH-1000XM4s simply because they offer significantly better sound quality, specifically sound clarity. I'll link Joshua Velour's technical review of the Pandas below if you're interested in more detail about this, but what I mean is that everything sounds a little bit crisper, which manifests as a clearer distinction between instruments and vocals, allowing me to pick up on quite a few details that I had never really noticed before. This isn't something I pick up on in every single song, but it's made my overall listening experience more enjoyable. Having said that, while I think you'd be able to hear the improved audio quality if you jumped back and forth between the Pandas and the Sonys in real life, I find it difficult to recommend the Pandas to a stranger without knowing just how important sound quality is to them. After all, most $400 headphones sound more than good enough, and in 2021, they also usually have many tech features, which unfortunately the Pandas don't. So here are five things that I think you should be aware of if you're looking at dropping $400 on the Pandas. One thing that's become widely expected of higher end consumer headphones is the ability to adjust the sound profile or equalization curve. This is typically done through an app that allows you to tune in the bass, mids, and treble to your liking. As far as features go, I find EQ adjustment to be a bit of a set it and forget it feature, but it's worth mentioning that the Pandas don't currently offer it. And this was intentional, because digital signal processing, or DSP, of the sound profile can distort the audio quality, and the whole idea behind the Pandas was to offer as little distortion as possible in a wireless form factor. Having said that, the Pandas Qualcomm 5124 chip is capable of making adjustments like this, so in response to a lot of consumer feedback, Drop will be releasing an app to bring EQ adjustment to the Pandas at some point, though there's no fixed date for when we can expect it. So it's something to be aware of for now. With that in mind, the Pandas have been passively tuned to a very enjoyable and well-balanced sound signature with nearly zero noise floor. So I think most people will be happy with them, unless you're looking for a lot of bass, because the bass response of the Pandas, while very clear, is not as heavy as a lot of other consumer headphones like the Sony's. For the same distortion avoidance reasoning, Drop also opted not to include any active noise cancelling features in the Pandas, again despite the fact that the Qualcomm chipset is capable of it. I haven't seen any confirmation that Drop is going to activate this in the future, but I also haven't given up hope yet, because while I wouldn't use it all of the time, active noise cancelling is one of those features that's become more or less standard on headphones at this price point, and I'm always grateful for it while travelling. Without any ANC, the Pandas do a decent job of passively blocking out background noise, which is why I wouldn't sacrifice sound quality to use their ANC regularly if it were available. But for comparison, here are the Pandas contrasted with the Sony WH-1000XM4s. So here's hoping that we see Panda ANC added in a future update. Microphone quality is another thing that I think you need to be aware of if you're looking at buying the drop Pandas, particularly now that more and more people are relying on their headphones for video conferencing. It's not that the built-in microphone isn't good, because it actually does a fair job of clearly transferring my voice in quiet environments. 
The problem is, they don't seem to be using the chipset CVC technology to cut out the background noise. As you can hear from this example of me speaking with some background noise going on. Now Drop does sell an additional boom mic that connects to the 3.5mm headphone jack, which has had favorable reviews, but when the headphones already cost $400, I don't think that most people will be happy spending another $50 to improve the microphone. I'm not one to take advantage of all of the fancy features of the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Things like activating the ambient pass-through mode when you start a conversation can be nice, but they aren't make or break for me. One feature I have consistently missed though is the ability to trigger the Google Assistant using a long press of the play pause button. It's a small feature, but it's something that's really common on devices in 2021, and frankly, I was surprised it wasn't incorporated into the Panda's joystick style controller. Again, hopefully this is something that can be fixed with the software patch once the Drop app is available. But until then, you won't be able to ask Google to play something from Spotify or read back that last message without using your phone. Finally, it's worth mentioning the Panda's fit and comfort. There's a lot of cool tech inside of these headphones, things you don't find in most other Bluetooth headphones, like a built-in amplifier and planar ribbon drivers. But all of that tech also adds to the weight of the headphones. Simply put, the Drop THX Pandas are the heaviest headphones I can remember wearing, coming in 50% heavier than the Sony WH-1000XM4s. This heft is probably the first thing you'll notice when you pick up the Pandas, and it has some unfortunate consequences for comfort. Overall, I do think that the Pandas are comfortable, and their build quality is absolutely excellent. But the headband could do with some more padding, because I find that after about an hour of wear, they become uncomfortable and require adjustment. They also rely on a significant amount of clamping force, which I actually quite like, but it can be a little jarring the first time that you wear them. The earpads do a decent job of distributing the clamping force, as they're nice and plush, but all of this material comes at the cost of breathability, which I suppose could be improved if you buy the perforated ear pads, but again, that's an added cost of about $60. So I've been making do with the default ones for now, and as a consequence, my ears tend to get warm after about two hours of seated work or a short walk with the dog. This hasn't been an exhaustive assessment of the Drop THX Pandas, and there are some other missing features that I didn't mention, like multipoint connectivity, but these have been the few that I've noticed the most over the past couple months using the Pandas on a daily basis. Personally, I still choose to use the Pandas over the Sony WH-1000XM4s because I find that the sound quality improvement is worth all of the sacrifices that I mentioned, but that's the question that you need to be able to answer for yourself before you pick them up in order to avoid disappointment. If you're interested in the Pandas, I'll leave some links in the description below where you can check them out. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.